We're back and waiting for the game to get underway. It's going to be on Apotheosis. Start the best of three winners match. Now the winner of this is done. They actually qualify and they don't have to play any more games because top two oh, advanced right. the passport qualifier. Yeah, I forgot it's passport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So the loser of this will go on to face you thermal, and then the winner of that is the last one to qualify. I think tonight is the Latin American qualifiers you're not covering, but that'll have actually ten people, I believe, from the qualifier technically like And I, I don't know how to justify that but... either, because it's like ten people with like paid trips too, from what I understand. I really think I mean we talked about it yesterday, right? Like how this even came to be. It feels kind of rushed and um like you know, it just was like, hey, can you do something? And Blizzard was like, oh, well, we need something between Montreal and BlizzCon, so let's do this. But I really think that it was a case of, like, this is the original plan, was to get 10-plus Latin American players, send them to a live finals, and have, you know, Copa America. But by actually making it bigger and better, and, you know, WS points and blah, 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 they had to do everything else, too. So it's, like, the best of both worlds for them, but just odd for us to see, as we're so used to, you know, you don't get in, you don't get in. There's no, like... Pre qualifier before the event. <laughs> I wish there was actually an official statement on that because it is not only so confusing, but also very much so like borderline is this allowed by WCS standards and rules? Yeah, I mean, there's it's a lot of it's it'd be like if the Germany was hosting a WCS event and so they got like 10 extra people, you know, to be flown over, which is maybe not cool. Like, I, I don't know, right? But it is what it is, and you guys have to pay attention to either... I, I don't know if someone else is streaming it, but I guess Wikipedia as well, uh, for those results. They are on Apotheosis in a ZVZ. In the bottom right, as the blue Zerg, he is Nurchio. And his opponent on the other side is going to be the red Zerg player, Team Liquid Snoot. Mm -hmm. It feels like forever since we've cast a ZVZ, to be honest. Um, Which is a good thing. Yeah, right? Initially, it was us avoiding it because for about a month and a half, it was nothing but ZVZ. Like, it was not cool. Uh, so initially, there was some avoidance. And then just coincidentally, the last week and a half, there's been so many more Terrans and Protoss, basically. Like, still a lot of Zergs. I think of TVZ and PVZ more than I think of any other, like, mirror matchup. But I guess the Elim League has all those TVTs, so there are mirror matchups. But just not... For the Zerg here. Not necessarily complaining, but it's like, oh yeah, these things exist. This happens. Right, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's totally a thing. Thanks to well, X Math Man X X Math Man X for the four-month reset. Hype. Uh, so what I was just gonna comment on though is actually Snoots and Nurture have had their very own, very interesting stories when it comes to fighting ZBZ specifically. Nurture, I think we get to sh smile a little more fondly at because we get to watch him play against one of our other favorites, Bly, kind of regularly in a lot of things. And let's not forget, Nurture was the king of what was once the Lycan League, then just became like regular cups and the Corsair cups. Like it was him and Bly winning all of them. So it was him and Bly fighting each other all the time. For weekly after weekly after weekly, we got to see nonstop Nurture ZBZ for majority of this legacy of the Void expansion. Snoot, on the other hand, has had his own vices with players like Elazer and Guru and somehow just gets stuck and hung up on them. But Snoot and Nurture themselves have not actually played against each other all that often. So like, they, are, they are both in their own respects like very good at ZBZ. I'm curious to see how these styles collide. You'll notice the builders have been almost identical. Snoot's made the one small choice of like getting aggressive with some lings, but that being said, it's not like Nurture can't handle this. Yeah. It is going to be very interesting to watch Snoots in the ZVZ as we have been paying so much more attention to his dominating styles versus Terran and versus Protoss lately. Like, Mass Balance versus Protoss and just excellent defense versus Terran has made Snoots not unbeatable, clearly. He's not winning every single tournament ever. And it's not because he's having so many ZVZs. He just, you know, he does lose to Terrans and Protoss. But uh, over this qualifier, especially as I checked who we beat to get here, Protoss and Terran. It was. It looked a like very dominating style. Uh, so in my mind, his EVZ, like I actually don't know his his actual stats. I guess we don't really like to see that. But EVZ would be his worst, just because his other two are so so damn good looking. Just like him. Hey. Nope. Ooh. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because speaking of looks for a moment, we all know Snoot's like a handsome son of a gun, right? Nurjo posted pictures of himself smiling, taking oh, a selfie. It's what? like. Not the Nurtio I thought I knew. <gasps> so surprising. Yeah, it looks like there was actually oh, an attack no. in the natural base simultaneously. Yeah. I missed that as well. So pardon me for gushing on this guy. I managed to kill five drones of Snoots. 
But as you'll note, that does only kind of even things up for him, so not uh, not exactly getting head off that just yet. But there's more lings on the way, and a lot of these drones are low. There we go, a couple bane lings morphing in there on that right side. And Snoots, I mean, he's gonna have his own bane lings. This is if he sees this coming, I don't think it'll do damage. But it's one of those things where you know he did get distracted on the left and got hit on the right. Yeah. He's making a lot of lings, so... Oh, okay. This isn't going so well for Nurchio. I was going to say, he's making so many lings. This does not seem like a response, but rather a response into an attack. Oh, those those lings that popped were lifesavers for those drones. Yeah. In fact, oh, my God. Very literally, lifesavers. But Nurchio dedicates a weird amount to this, because look at the resources lost. Dead even at a thousand to a thousand. Yeah, he did force Snoot to, as I said, either over defend, which I don't think was Snoot's problem. Like I don't think that was, uh, you know, an accident. But he did, uh, whatever the case is, Snoot made more lings, and now Nurgio has to make more lings in defense, of course, as maybe Nurgio wasn't expecting this. Uh, it's a pretty long map, but lings are obviously very, very quick. So Nurgio does not have Bane lings ready, did not have lings ready, and losing all of his queens here. A couple of drones are gonna go down too with hold position, and Nurture just wasn't expecting this. I guess he thought they'd both trade equally on his attack and then go back into droning, but he was totally wrong about that. Oh, that one last drone should've gone down. Okay, eight drones. Oh, wow, and Sue was droning so hard behind that. He's up almost 20 drones? Oh, dear. Well, Nurture is catching up, I guess, very quickly, but that's still... Uh, that's still playing the catch-up game. Mmm, catch-up. And uh, I guess his lanes are going to try and be a little bit sneakier than before. Snoot does have at least two paths covered with his overlord. He does not have all four covered. That is, I think, one of the problems of Apotheosis for this matchup in particular. Oh, uh, overlord drop. Not scouted by Snoot. Oh, Baneling drop. I don't like all four Banelings, but either way, it seems like there's going to be some damage done. Banelings over uh, here. Uh, they're going to be scouted by the fourth base. When Apotheosis was picked, I didn't expect this to be so guerrilla tactic and I thought this would be a little bit more straightforward. You know, Roach versus Roach and Ravages in the midfield, but I'm loving these side attacks set up in Urchio. That drop in the main's got four Banelings going towards that mineral line. We got the big attack on that right side swooping in. Snoot doesn't see this main attack coming at all. He does take 11 drones in damage. Natural base also getting swarmed by Lings. A couple Banelings coming in, but Snoot's got his own to try and stop this from getting too out of hand. But that drone line, uh, still in danger. Yeah, he loses. 21 workers have gone down. Yeah, that only brings him down to, you know, below six, that of Nurchio. So you can see how well Snoot was doing before all this happened, without the four banelings up here, without the ling connections here, it isn't enough. But luckily, everything worked kind of according to plan for Nurchio. He does take a bit of a lead, uh, not only in that drone count, but also the army counts. Uh, upgrade to finish for Nurchio as well, I think, during that attack. So that's uh, another reason his lings are doing so damn well. Snoot's still waiting on his. Oh, but it's not Carapace, it's melee, so. So that I had one baneling. Uh, of course, there are still lings running all over the place in Nurchio. I mean, if he gets attacked, I think he's going to do damage. But I want to point out, despite this, despite all of this craziness and the workers lost and everything on his side of the field, Snoot's kept the worker count relatively even. He's still taking losses, still making mistakes, but he's, he kept it close to 50. Him and Nurchio both got the infestation pits down, exact si same timings. Yeah, let's talk about that. Although, it looks like Snoot, I mean, you kind of just... Now he's falling behind. Now he's getting him. way too much. Yeah, um, what did he lost? Like, over 40? 50 That's drones good. now. Oh, God. I don't I, know I how he has an even drone count. Uh, as, far, as long as he did. He still has an even army count, too, which is what's also really surprising. Uh, and he's catching up on the... Oh, no, he's caught up on the upgrades for now, but... That hive, yeah. Nurchio getting the leads now. Um, very interesting to see them both go for that hive. I mean, sure, upgraded lings is definitely a style. That's not so surprising. Uh, even double upgraded lings, right, uh, is a thing. But to see both of them advance so quickly to what I assume is going to be Ultralisk is a surprise. Um, as we said, we haven't cast EBZ in like a couple of weeks now. <laughs> maybe this is the new way to go, or maybe this is just the uh, way that Snoot and Nurchio play. But it is going to be Ultra versus Ultra, unless Snoot dies in the next next minute here. He's certainly going to be fall behind, having to replace so many drones, but... He might get the ultras. He might get his own lucky ling uh, run by. Still waiting on that though. There chose the one being a lot more aggressive. Oh, the hive was here. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess you want priority health on a gold base. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I don't. It's a bit weird to see the macro hatcheries and they just end up being in the main. Again, credit's got to go to Snoot. He's been taking such heavy losses, but still, while deflecting the lings and losing drones, he's been able to rebuild them behind it, and his macro has just been nailing it. I mean, the fact that he's up workers is a pretty big deal, considering he has not exactly slaughtered <laughs> Nurtios to make that the case. God, how would this game look if he didn't lose all those drones? How does he even do this, though? This is my question. Like, we've seen so many ZVZs where players do all the right things and still can't catch up, much less get ahead in the economic regard, but... The 1-1 one, one kind of evens out with the 2-0 of Nurtio. Nurtio's getting quickly faster ultras, but man, we've actually seen a lot of ultra versus ultra ZVZs. They're kind of a rarity, so maybe some of you have not been blessed with this opportunity, but they are some of the dumbest but funnest things to watch happen. Mm, Snoot does need to get his own aggression going soon. Ooh. Loses more drones to that gold base. Yeah. It's not just about him losing units on this side of the map, it's about... Nurtio, I mean, there's a reason he was falling behind again in drones, right? First of all, he seems to be okay at 52 drones, whereas Snoot wanted to get up to 60, fine, whatever. But he's been investing in so much more, so much quicker, so much faster. Um, that's why there is a bit of a lull in that drone counts. And now everything is out, so all the ultras are out, they're gonna have a, a the plating upgrade, and Snoot is only just starting his own attacks. I mean, if Nurtio can just send one ultra to boat to all bases, to each base, there's nothing Lings can really do. He's trying to get him distracted, sending more ultras over to the right while none go to the left, and it will, funnily enough, work. As I said, Nurtio could fall prey to the same tactics he just used against Snoot, but he's actually sending his ultras over to the other side of the map. Is this even the right move? I don't I don't know. Snoot's about to have Ooh, his own. Okay, he is forced to retreat. Yeah, there's yeah, Bane Lingus over up. here, ultras popped out over here. And while it looked like maybe he was going to get that devastating amount of just like oh, every single mineral drugs, line, run. it did not no. happen. No. And without that time bot, I think Suit just does just dies against the ultras. I, I mean, mean Ling surrounds are gonna go down here. Ultras do pop out for Suit finally. Well, what's funny about this is it's not like surrounding an Archon, right? Like, you, the Ultras have so much armor, the Lings basically do nothing to them. You need the damage of another Ultra to oppose Ultras, but Snoot, without his own kite, is plating, had to burn all of his transfuses on that first Ultra. It goes down, his defenses are waning, and Nurtio has just taken this game by storm. Yeah. It was a long time coming after killing 50-plus drones, but damn. I mean... God damn, if, if Nurtio had let up for a second, if there had been like 30 seconds, no, not even, like 15 seconds of timing, Snoot's kite display was so close to finishing, he would have had ultras out. Like, I'm I'm first off impressed that Nurtio was able to keep that pressure up despite never actually breaking Snoot. Sometimes we just see that exhaustion set in. But furthermore, I'm so damn impressed by Snoot taking 50 plus workers and losses, still getting the hive tech at the same time as Nurtio. Still only being what was 10 seconds behind Nurtio. Like, that was a crazy good ZVZ. That was a crazy ZVZ. As always, the lobby takes a little bit while longer to get up and ready to go. And I'm interested in seeing what the second map is. Apotheosis was a very long map and had a lot of avenues of attack that contributed to Nurture doing so much damage. I'll see what the next one is and come back to you as soon as possible. All right, the next map is New Gettysburg. Oh, hmm. Well, this might be easier for Snoot to basically not die to multiple attacks. As there's the bridge and then there's the northern side. That does take uh, like three overlords, I guess, instead of four. I don't know. It's still a wide open map, still kind of big. And Nurtio did just eventually start pulling Snoot so, so much apart. Like, let's not forget that Snoot had the initial lead. Of course, I see a lot of people in chat saying how Snoot Nurture is the best foreigner and we shouldn't be impressed, and of course he's gonna win, and blah blah blah. Snoot had the lead in the beginning. <laughs> Nurture Yo, just took it back and then some. We've also talked a lot in the past, like, and I got shit for it, like agreeing that one quote, like Artosis said, he thought Nurture was the best foreigner at the time, and I was certainly on board with it. But I, I think it's really a disservice to not refer to Snoot as a really good foreigner as well. Like, it's hard to differentiate. We know for a fact in StarCraft, there's no definition of the best because that changes on a week-to-week -week basis. You have somebody win a dream hack for that day, they are the best player, but the next week they might lose the first round of a Corsair Cup. That's the reality of StarCraft. It's very volatile and crazy. So I know there's a lot of fans with a lot of passion. Don't get me wrong, guys. I don't want you to lose that passion. But to say that Nurtu is simply the best and Snoot is nowhere close is just a complete, complete fallacy in my mind. Mm-hmm.
spots at any rate. We're going to see who's going to be the best today. Because this is, of course, the winner's bracket match. And the winner of this will go through to Copa Intercontinental. Playing for that WCS Mexico title. In the bottom left side, it's going to be the Red Zerg player, Team Liquid Snoots. In the bottom right, as the Blue Zerg, he is Nurcio. I mean, being up 1-0 is certainly going to feel good. Hail to the king, baby. All that stuff. But I can certainly see Snoop bringing this back. I think, though, what I am truly curious about, and I mean, no disrespect to Snoop in hopes that he loses this, I think Snoop versus Euthermal is going to be for quite an epic loser's finals. And it's a damn shame that that would be a best of three if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. I am really curious. God damn it, Lupa. Don't write us a story for your resub message. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really curious about how Snoot and uh, Ethan will go. That's a very old-fashioned matchup. But yeah, Lupa for the 22 month resub. Thank you so much. Hey uh, guys, just checking in to say you guys are awesome for sending me my part two. I'm glad Rifkin is doing okay after his accident. Love you guys so much. I'm always support as long as I can breathe. Take care, and I hope to meet you at an event. Woo. I've already met Lupa, so that message is clearly for you. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Lupa was my adorable little Ireland friend buddy. Kept me company with his uh, boyfriend, I think, at uh, oh, what was it? Du Dublin, I believe. Dublin. Yeah, when I got when I got that like fucking nine hour layover, going to Homestead Cup feels bad, man. <laughs> he did take so... me to what was that store? The Lush or whatever with the oh, sparkly Lush. soap. That's the first time I'd ever been. Yeah, Lush. Sorry, ne the first time I'd ever been inside that store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, now that's still like the best airplane trip for me and like the worst for you. I know. We got so, I got yeah. so lucky, you got so unlucky. I mean, the, the ride home was terrible because I was sick, uh, but the, air, the airplane well, itself was amazing. I was sick on the ride home too. The problem is I just blacked out for nine hours. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, you're lucky in that regard. I was all types of, I had to, I had to get up because the person next to me was sick too and I was a nice person. God, anyway. Anywho, um, New Gettysburg, we do have the build starting to differentiate a little bit. Bailey Ness for Nurcio as he grabs a third base. We'll see if he does pile on yeah. a little bit of aggression to kind of cover it for a little while. And then, of course, He's... you know, go very hard and droning. What's well, interesting, Stu's still going for the plus one melee this time around. But that aside from the last game, it is interesting that's a big difference because they played so on par with one another. Same build, same drone, same everything up to that Ling difference. But for now, for Snoot, obviously, you want that plus one weapons, you're gonna get aggressive, it makes your lings better than their lings, yada yada yada. But we've seen a lot more carapace in the history of StarCraft 2. Legacy of the Void really has made this plus one melee a lot more popular. Yeah. I forget the exact logic on it. If I think about it, I could I could probably say it again. But basically, like the, the melee is cheaper than the carapace. And um, eventually it, it evens out against the carapace too. Like that's actually what happened with Nurcio last game, right? He went for the plus one and then plus two, and though Snoot went for one one, it still evened out to, you know, the Bane Links hit and, and you know the upgrades in general even. But yeah, you still see a couple of people go for plus one carapace. I mean, I remember Ooh, back when it was yeah that was nice when it was still like kind of like this new thing to do. There were tweets from like TLO and Snoot, right? Saying that I think TLO said that plus one carapace was very old fashioned and not even nearly as good. Like he was a big advocate of getting the melee upgrades only. Anyway, thank you to uh, Dr. or DRK Boris for the 15 month resub. A lot of links have been in for, for Snoot, but they're not all collected together and they're not supported by Bane links quite yet. So Nurcio with an even number or maybe even greater, yeah, greater number of links here should be able to push this back no problem. And then even have maybe attack of his own. Um, was the Bane list canceled and remade? It seems to be making forever. Okay, now it's, now it's done. Nurcio has his own Bane links. Should he need them, but apparently he doesn't. Thanks to Cthulhu Pig for the three month resub. Cthulhu Fatag. Well, that first queen almost goes down. Benevolent Nurture that he is lets it live with one HP as he backs away. Bailing's going to be trading out for Bailing's, but this with that plus one melee for Snoot's going to be really important. Not just because he won the Ling War for it, but as Nurture does finish up his Carapace upgrade, he's no longer going to have that automatic freebie live with one health aspect that I think he's expecting even. Well, Spinecloud's going to move down here. Lair is on the way now for Nurture. And uh, Snoots is falling behind, at least in that regard. Even workers 
Xena, of course, went for roaches with, uh, even though he did get a plus one melee, and is probably looking for a huge attack here. No, he gets plus one carapace as well. Uh, but he is still making a lot of army units, not drones. So even though he has something looking towards that later stage of the game, we're going to get this overlord. He first is going to have maybe this, this really powerful attack. Yeah, more roaches on the way. I guess the key is, is Nurchio will be able to see this? Does he even know it's roaches yet for Snoot? Where is the roach worn? No, he does not. So the first time he sees the roaches, he's going to have to try and see all of them and know that they has a suspicious amount. Or see the third base and say, hey, that's a suspicious amount of no drones. Suspicious lack of drones. And actually get his defense all set up. Because he's still droning a little bit. His roach warren was pretty late. I mean, it was after the, the lair was already done. And, oh, he realizes now, I think. Yeah, the Overlord saw all these roaches, and he's trying to get more spine crawlers, but he needs to spend his money and his larva on roaches, which are just still not quite ready to go. Uh, he's gonna try and buy time with the Link counterattack. Snoot is, uh, I mean, he's, you know, he's on slow roaches, so it's taking a while to get over here, but... This might... I mean, depending on how long it takes, this might Ooh. work with his plus one carapace, too. The bottom side of the map, though, didn't go so well for Snoot. He did lose the bridge fight, but Nurchio's pulling back because he wants to be able to defend this attack up here to the north, so he is going to have the full might of his army, but is that going to be enough? The roaches are actually looking pretty darn good, but the spine call is getting a chance to actually root on down. Garosa Bile's going to have to land and knock them out as soon as possible. Oh, transfuses mm. on that aren't too bad, but he's out of transfuses. The juice is gone, and the first spine crawler are going to go down. Snoot's winning with the roaches pretty nicely, but Nurchio's finally into the fight. Corosa Bile's going to force them to reposition. Snoot not moving his own Ravagers away. Going to eat those roach shots. Corosa Bile's now gone as the Ravagers fall apart, but Snoot's couple of roaches reinforcing coming on in. Nurchio's got a big army supply lead coming off the back end of this, though, which pretty, pretty much indicates he won this fight, but lost the economic war. Snoot's in trouble for this counterattack. Uh, Nurchio is going to do the same yeah. thing that Snoot just did, except that he already has a lair, if, and his upgrades are all done. Man, if, if Snoot had creeps spread out, if he had like a spine crawl blocking this, like he'd be able to buy himself some time. But unfortunately, he doesn't and won't. And this is bad. Like he's got more drones and he's he's comfortably mining, but it's only going to be for a few seconds as Nurchio's army marches on in. Snoot simply cannot contest this. Mm, this is I mean, big. if the Ravagers had caught Scary. the roaches at the choke, if the Bailey's got them, well, they're all stacked up. Like maybe this looks a little bit different, but. Trying to take the best engagement possible. He's just surrounded. Yeah, this doesn't look so great for Snoot. Who might just be going down 0-2 to face off against Uthermal. If Nurchio wins this, he is done for the day and he's going to Mexico. Mexico. It's, it would it would look this that way if there were more Ling reinforcements. Only a handful coming right now. Snoot does have the defender's advantage and he is getting an upgrade lead. Eventually, if he does push his back, he'll have plus one. Over what is 1-1 one, one on the Lings here. Nurchio going for a Spire, though, and I would give a Spire, as long as it can actually get done and, and need is out, um, a better chance over a single upgrade for Snoots. Uh, Snoots getting a fourth base, so I guess he'll have better mining if he does, again, push this back. It's still not quite over. Nurchio making more and more Lings. He's got to be careful not to throw away his army, as he does need something to protect that Spire. That's why he's retreating. He's retreating back to the bridge, at least. Still not entirely leaving Snoot alone. Snoot's not going to think about scouting. He might even be thinking about Mutas right now. It's a lot of ifs right now, <laughs> unfortunately for him, right? Like, if he goes Spire, if he gets to Mutas, if he kills me, like, there's a lot of uncertainty for Snoot, but I am impressed that he held that fight, because that supply difference, that army supply especially looked like he shouldn't have. So the defense not bad for the time being. We will see if this gets out of hand with that Spire or not. Nurchio, the reason he's dipping down so much in that army supply uh, and drones. He's banking. I suppose, He yeah, wants to be able banking. to bank those 10 mutas right away, and he should be able to do that. Exactly. Um, might be capped by supply? I don't know. That'll be close, actually. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Snoot supply blocks for a while, actually. Uh, there's 10 mutas. Maybe an upgrade on them. Yeah, he's going to get plus one attack. And Snoot, well, as I said, he wasn't really probably thinking about scouting. He might, now that he's had time to think and breathe... Be like, oh, wait a minute, is he going to go for mutas behind this? Because this is a fairly common tactic to kind of solidify your win a lot of the times, but also to mix things up if it's an even game. I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking, but he does have an infestation bit on the way, so that's going to be helpful. He does have queens on the way, and I think he has an idea that it's going to be mutas. Uh, Ling's just barely on cover, but there you go, no overload sees it now. Question is, what does he do? He doesn't have spore crawlers. I said he was getting queens and infestation pit, but yeah, he was missing spore crawlers, so maybe it wasn't. <laughs> maybe he wasn't thinking of mutas. 
queens. You know, I have a lot of chance to use their recently made. Couple though, and it's only 10 mutas, you know? They're not super powerful. Oh my god, they're gonna steamroll me. Quite yet. Another one goes down. Trading out for queens and attack from the north. Nurchio can get roaches still, of course. He still has the roach warren to help defend. Ling attack in the middle of the map. Even upgrades on these guys, which he does have a plus one missile attack upgrade advantage over Nurchio. And Nurchio, he spent so long trying to kill the queens, he wasn't here dealing damage to the army, so he might just lose a third base for that. This is looking better for Snooze. Of course, he'll lose the army as Mutas will chase this down, but he's the one with the fourth base, he's the one with more drones, and he's the one with the third base now, too, as this goes down. I'm not sure, I, I guess... Nurtu didn't play the Muta card 100% correctly, but he was also in a bit of a, you know, dangerous situation. He was down drones, he was down a hatchery, and uh, he was relying a lot on those Mutas, which did not help him enough. You know, I, I really thought Mutas were going to be the, the absolute certainty in this game. Right. It's really cool seeing Stu not lose out to this, but the concern is his momentum just dropped hard. Nurture's well, in a terrible way. Yeah. <laughs> but can Stu actually stop? I mean, if, if he lands any of these fungal growths, that's going to be devastating to Nurture. But there's not really a lot of queens or hydras or anything to follow this up. And fungal growths alone aren't going to cut it. Those investors won't have fungal growths, too. So as the oh, mutas yeah. come over here, he's got to protect them underneath spore crawlers or something. But we're up to 21 mutas. Spore crawlers might not be enough. There's only still oh. one at each base. Queens are here, though. And it's not the queens that are scary, it's their transfuses on the spore crawler. I would say is really scary, but the infestors yeah, that... are right there. He should probably try and snipe them. Yeah, there's a couple of infested here. The fourth base is probably just forfeit for the time being. That's not a bad thing to have oh, to give up. I mean, infestors. he did knock down the third of Nurcio. Snoo can fall back to three and still oh, be God, an okay spot, but he's so <gasps> close to Fungals. He gets a decent one, but it's not going to be enough. The Queens are out of range, actually. Ah! He's only going to get a couple ah! of oh, no. He pops off another Fungal. Mistakes from Nurcio to leave those behind. But he does start killing drones in the other mineral line. His Snoot doesn't have a lot of workers. Nurcio doesn't have a lot of workers. Both players at a pretty sticky situation to say the least yeah of course nurture doesn't have to or suit doesn't have to replace hatcheries though so yeah that's that's the big advantage he has going for him right nurture if he had the you know if he had a hatchery's worth of a bank when all this the shit went down on his side of the map i think he's in a much better situation the third base is probably already done and he's back to at least a bit of droning uh, or mining rather with his now better drone count but because uh he didn't and whatever bank he did have he used to make more lings I still give this to Snoot, even if it means a long, slow march with queens and infestors. Yeah, I mean, first off, it's crazy that Snoot, he was producing three queens at a time, and I think when the, when the mutas are ready to come, he had about eight, I want to say, I looked at the tab briefly, up to 16 now. And we've seen Oof. in the past, this many queens can actually take on mutas. And as you pointed out before, it's not so much their damage as it is their transfuse. They're just going to be, you can't kill them with the mutas. Uh, a couple of banelings could have... Really wrecked Snoot's ling count, but his queens come over and protect them. It's so damn many queens. Nurcio, should he have had a third base mining, was probably already on his way to... I'm not even sure about more mutas. I would say maybe back into roaches. But, uh, you know, the option's not there for either one. Ling's attacking to that north. He's gonna maybe chip away at the base, too. Nah, but he's already here. Uh, thank you, by the way, to Exonym. For that seven month reset. It says, woo, love your work, keep it going. You're just gonna try his hardest to get these lings to do something, but they're being caught by queens and banelings at every corner. Oh, looks at these two. These are two one lings, by the way. He managed to squeeze in a plus two melee attack. Uh, so they're killing drones pretty quickly. Now Snoot's down back to 24, but Jerncho still has not remade a base. <laughs> he really is going all in on an army, trying to hold on. Snoot goes for an Ultras Cavern? That's actually that's actually cool, because transfuses will make these invulnerable. Well, not only that, but Ultras, are just they've got the armor capability to make the mutas just not do damage to them, right? Like, you're so worried about your Lings getting picked off, or your Roaches getting picked off in the middle of the map. Ultras won't be. Those will take about a billion hits from the mutas. He's defending, and I also want to point out, like, again, with both boys having kind of a garbage economy, it still favors Snoot, because Snoot actually has a fully sad, like, a fresh base there in the top left to mine from, whereas Nurtio... He can't mine effectively with what he has. Without that third base, without he's long distance mining for goodness sake. I mean, it's not a good situation for him. It's not a good look on him. He can finally rebuild a base. <laughs> could. Will um, he though? He might just use that for more mutas. There okay. we go. 
Yeah. I was he had 300 gas in his pocket. That might have just been three more mutas that came out. Yeah. Um, now that he has it building, though, like he can finally feel comfortable building nothing but army again. I mean, he would love to get a fourth base too, right? But it's not even like they have enough drones to quite cover it, as Nurtio fell behind once again. Man, imagine if he had all those mutas, those fungals didn't hit, he picked up all the infestors. There's still a lot of queens, but um, with, you know, what was that, almost 20, I want to say? At least 15 mutas? Uh, that's different than 10. I can't believe he invests in plus 2 attack, by the way. I really wonder what would be better, more mutas or, or better mutas at this point? I guess better mutas, because you're not going to get a lot of mutas, are you? So I each muta being upgraded is better. Maybe, but I, I at the don't same know. time, it's it's like fully upgraded mutas versus things like ultras aren't going to have a lot of consequence. Uh, you know, he finds the infestors without queen support. Oh, but there's more fungals. And there's a transfuse to keep those infestors oh. alive too, so not even going to get baited into it. Oh, that was so close though. 23 workers went down because of the lings that were supporting those mutas, and soon is back down to barely one base fully saturated, yeah. but ultras are here. But he's still mining better than Nurchio. Nurchio's base is only just finishing up, so he, he's got a chance for drones, he's building more drones. like. It's so weird the way the economies have acted in this game. I mean, credit to Nurtio for being harassing. Like, if he had just left Snoot alone and tried to play behind this, there's no way he would have caught up. So, I mean, he's doing a good thing, but it's so weird watching this happen. Um, thank you to Thor Steininger. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, for seven months for that resub. And Swefimo hits us up with a big 2-0. It says, rabble, rabble, something, something, message, resub, something or other. Thank you. Thank you, old man. Oh, Ultra, not a good thing to scout. No. Not a good thing to scout with combination of the queens. You know, like, these are like four oh. ultras and that's it for snoots. No. I would say like Nurtio eventually takes care of them, right? But so here's the silly thing about this, right? The ultras aren't gonna have the queens following them. There's no wow. creeps right through the middle of the map, so that's true. It's gonna Nurtio... be the slowest <laughs> march, right? But Nurtio can also whittle down that ultra. Where normally it would arrive at your base at full health because it was just recently transfused. That's not the case at all. You actually can't get and... the ultra there safely. And Snoot, like, if he does do a slow march across the map, he'll give up all of his base defenses. Yeah, actually, what's Nurture's damage on these? 10 damage on each Glaive Worm to the 6 armor in the Ultra. So it's like 4 damage a shot, and it's a pretty long cooldown in Isn't comparison it... to something like Marines. It's 11 damage soon. He's got that plus, one. He's got that that plus 2 fire attack. That ricochet from the Glaive Worm is going to do literally nothing. <laughs> oh, killing Queens is pretty important. Even though Snoot's are now acquiring a bank because he got up back to 42 drones, it's like... This is these are good pickoffs. Nurtio should still lose this game, right, guys? But he's making moves. Well, so I agree. Like Snoot is in a position that is just absolutely prime. Supply count through drones and army are just through the roof in comparison. But nurtio has been making this work in the same situation. Like five minutes ago, same thing. Snoot had better workers, better mining, and more army, but doesn't mean Snoot actually got to push at any point. He's been constantly fending off Nurtio. <laughs> This is this is gonna be so annoying for somebody like Snoot. I actually love these small amounts of links because I feel like if you send a big attack of like 20 work, 20 links, Nurtio is gonna pull back and kill you. But he might not find that it's worth his time to come back for three to five links, and that's where Snoot might start getting small leads. I, this is all theory here, guys, because it's such a weird, desperate scenario because neither of them can crack the other, but either neither of them are in danger either at the moment. Yeah. Um. I wonder, Nurtio gonna try and go for his own ultras, I suppose? Or no, a greater spire would be such a better option as he has the spire oh, yeah. available. That well, should be what he's going for. So here's my theory on this, right? Like on one hand, like, okay. yeah, the broodlords will be the trump cards against most things. Ultras can't shoot up, obviously. But at the same time, broodlings are gonna get quickly splashed down by the cleave from the ultras. This isn't something you're relying on Storm to like clear say... out the wave of broodlings. Like the ultras are just gonna Kaiser swipe twice and have no problem. So the Broodlings might not be able to do much damage or live very long to do damage, as long as they're providing some type of wall that literally stops oh the Ultralisk in their tracks. <gasps> I just realized, don't Queens have the same range now as Broodlords? Is that a thing? That might have been a thing. Because it wasn't before, but I know they have eight, and I think Broodlords have oh eight, God. don't they? I could be wrong. I actually don't remember the Broodlords. Uh, oh, that's a pretty good hit. The Queens he aren't supporting yet. should be able to yet, clean up the rest but... of these. One more fungal. One he more has fungal. it. He's trying to get the snipe on the funk on the infestors themselves, actually, because there's there's only two left. I've been trying to make note of that as we keep on talking. He hits those. Maybe Snoot forgets to make more. Ten drones went down in the natural. It looks no. like if he gets, he should have sniped the sensation pit. The argument could be made as he notices that Snoot's making ultralisks that the gas won't be there to replace the infestors. Uh, that's true. You don't you don't have 400 gas handy when you're trying to make one ultra, much less ultras, two infestors to go with it. Ultras no. 
Ultras, no. This is no. the problem we've talked about before. Stop. <laughs> but to the south, to his credit, the Ultras actually act as a bit of a distraction. So there are three Ultras in the south that march across that bridge, and they actually make it across the map. Hive oh. just now finishing. But what can these Ultras do? The Mutas will clean them up. It'll take some time, but the oh. Mutas will clean them up. Oh, start thinking you're Spire. Oh, he can't. He's no gas. Uh -oh. oh, no. Nurture just made three Mutas. You're right. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, well, can he kill the Hive? Actually? Oh, he's not going to go for he it? He's going to go for it. Oh, I don't think he can. He's attacking the Lings now. He's not going to get it. I don't think it would have got even if he focused fire. I, it honest. would have been a lot closer, and then he could have maybe attacked with the Ling. Lings. Yeah, maybe. Um, the There's immune a lot account. Of this game, but damn, if Snoot isn't like throwing away very expensive units for. Yeah, I think he's trade. actually. He might lose this game now. The fact that the mute account has been growing, like at first it was growing one every minute. What does Snoot care? But I now know. that he realizes there's two healthy mining bases and the count get up to like 30, he realizes like, but oh shit, like I need to go back to anti air. The concern still is 30 uh, mutants can die to a fungal growth. That's right, exactly. the reality of this. I actually really wish Snoot would go for a Viper to pe just add on to that, right? You close them point. all in, you hit them with that fungal growth, pair it up with a parasitic bomb, hell, corrosive huh. piles, I don't know, but something. Why? I really don't know about plus three attack. As you said, like, it does take just a couple of fungals, and while he's not on a healthy amount of infestors, they're on a healthy amount of energy, so it's not like they're gonna get sniped unless the Ling's gonna be on top of him. So, so here's my thought process, right? I'm gonna try and get ahead of Nurtio. First off, there's a lot of confidence with this guy, right? He's a good player, he knows it, everybody knows it. I think he's confident that he's not gonna fuck up really badly and have that one fungal Stop group be the end of his life. But, yeah. taking that one step further, the Mutas are way more mobile than Broodlords would be. If you had Broodlords, you would be stuck slowly in, in, and steadily in one part of the map. The Mutas can easily go from the top no. to the south in a heartbeat, but he goes no. through that fungal growth, hits the Mutas! This might just be it! There's a couple more fungals where that came from, and a lot of queens to dish out that damage. Transfuse is going down like nuts, and Nurtio had 29 Mutas coming into the but, fight, down to 19! But he still has enough to take on... Well, to leave, I, basically, right? Like, he left with them. So, that's a big problem for Snoot. Snoot's remembering to make more infestors on Rio. We that's talked good. about the fear of him maybe not doing this. They Two more infestors have, on route. They still have pathogen glands. Like, if these lanes can find them as they pop out, or, a, a, as I said, like, maybe snipe the infestation pitch would be his next target. Um, on your logic with the, the mutas, by the way, which obviously Snoot wasn't, or Snoot nurture wasn't quite going with, he, like, suicided them, right? Uh, he thought yeah. he could take on the army. But even if he goes back to what you were talking about, I still think getting two, three Broodlords to protect your bases and have that eventual, like, maybe base trade be forced out. Because what happens in any other matchup when there's too many Mutas? Versus Protoss versus Terran, eventually those those races get fed up and they counterattack. And sometimes you're ready, sometimes you're not, with, like, Lurk or something like that. Ooh, Lurkers. But anyway, uh, that just might happen here for uh, Snoot. It's already kind of happened with his Ultras. So, quick quick addendum to what was said earlier about the Broodlords. I didn't know Broodlord range. I said I didn't know Broodlord range. And I'm glad we got chat to try and help us, but then I quickly realized chat doesn't seem to know Broodlord range either. It's, it's an argument between 10, <laughs> 11, and 12. I just remember them having their range reduced. So range, that's my it. point of that comment. But I'm glad to see I'm not the only one in the confusion circle. Oh, these investors have one bungle apiece. He can't I mean, take them on. He only needs, he only needs one good Oh, bungle. Jesus. Dang. Oh, my God. Okay, it's a big waste on one. I mean, the queens oh, are still in number 15. Oh my god! Aren't you? Oh my god! All the infestors. Oh, there's one more. One more. One more. Wait, I, is I don't there? know if he. Like, for him, he's got to be wrong? guest working. It's hard to actually tell what's left with this. There's so many purple bars from the queens, it's a little bit deceptive as to how many infestors yeah. actually have energy. Yeah, I was a little confused too. This one out has energy. This one as well. Ah, uh, the bait! The bait! Oh, oh Jesus! Oh, it. I can't believe he's doing this. Snoot has but such a good army. Up. While this goes on, huge run by to the south. This is something where if the mutas are distracted up here, there's no way to get home in time to defend that hive. The links have a full surround on it. It's gonna go down. Hive falls. No chance at a greater spire anymore at this point. He goes to the main. He might even get that spire on top of this. And while this fight goes down down here, he does attack to the north of the ultras. Nurtio's freshly mined base is unfortunately gonna be mining no longer. I don't know. Nur Nurtio can still live though. It's funny. This looks like right. a powerhouse, like that's on the game move, but it's not well, quite it, yet. It is. No, no, it is. It is because look at this. Nurtio actually has no money left in his third either. So it's actually oh, no. Oh yeah, he's for him. entirely mined out. He can't that base. He's he down was, to thirty workers. He was supposed to though. Like he had five hundred minerals. He goes for the attack, however, and there's more infestors. This is really the all in from him. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I mean, I don't know if you want to throw an infested Terrence at this point. Are you going to bank on fungals? He's so close to having those fungals. He knows it. Oh, my uh, God. He doesn't quite land the money fungal, however. Oh, his last base is going to go down. And he just spent with on three more mutas. Again, in a situation where he cannot afford to do both. 
he's gonna lose all the ultras to the mutas, right? But if he kills the base, it's worth it. If he shuts down mining, it's worth it. He will eventually, through energy, beat out uh, mutalisks. Yeah. You know what's funny, too? Nurgio can't rebuild an Overseer, so Snoot's creep threat is, is gonna be there forever. I tell you something, Rob, I've not been this hype for a ZVZ in so long. I love the way this played out. It got crazy oh and ridiculous. Oh my God. And the thing is, every move this game was pretty much justified. Like, <laughs> as stupid as this game has been, and that hatchery does not go down, that's a, that's very unsettling. But I think some Lings or anybody might be able to do it. I think yeah, at the same time, yeah. the suits recognize there's no minerals left at that base. There's no fourth or fifth on the map. The Ultra is running around kind of checking. There's just no way Nurchio is going to build more units. I haven't really checked a suit side of the map in a while, but as I said, all the creep spread is oh, not going to be cleaned up. Um, so this... the queen's going to have free reign over every single base. So many spore crawlers. No, this isn't going to work. Oh my god, it's so not going to oh, work. He yeah, wanted. He, for that bungle. he 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 was thinking what about was I think going for Holy the suicide. Shit, did you see that? No, I didn't get the. the... Something just went like super flying to the south. <laughs> I did not get that on my vision. That all the like overloads go down. Like. Snurchio, he knows he can't take on the army anymore. There's way too many infestors, there's spur crawlers there as well. All I can hope for is maybe a literal base race, but that's where the creep spread really helps out. Oh my god, he splits, that's there's it. There's the fungals! There's this no way. This might just be the end of the game. There's so many queens, there's so many fungals. Snoot's got three or four more where that came from. Nurchio's not escaping with any of these meters if Snoot does it right. Oh and there we god. have it, ladies and gentlemen. GG. Good game. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Ah, oh, this is such a good finals. Tied up now 1-1, one, one, and we have one more game where that came from. So, folks, sit tight. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss the finale of this series. We'll see you in two minutes. Oh, the ace match is going to be on Galactic Process, and we are just about ready to go. A lot of talk about that last game in chat. Uh, people bring up Nidus Worm, of course, the Viper thing that uh, Rifkin brought up like six minutes ago in that game. <laughs> I um, mean, the, Vi the Viper thing is more of a hypothetical than anything else, because I think the regeneration on Mutas is so good. You're not really worried about parasitic it, bombs. Yeah, I think the mass amount of infestors would have been the case. But there's so many things that almost could have happened uh, for everywhere. Like, you know, if Nurchio had overlords for that one huge ling run by, maybe it doesn't go so badly. If he targets the infestation pit when he had lings in the main base and mews in the main base, maybe uh, that solves his infestor problem. He can actually take on the queens. For Snoots, I actually don't know what Snoot could have changed to make it a more convincing, <laughs> like, let's end the game right now. What'd you say? I was going to say smoother. <laughs> yeah, smoother. Yeah, to make it smoother. Like, I, I guess maybe had he invested in, in patent glands, there would have been a lot more times where his investors did uh, have fungals. I don't know. Um, maybe. I, I think he actually played that out pretty pretty well, all yeah, things considered. You know, you see a lot of people in chat talking about being outplayed because Nurchio held on for so long. I wouldn't say that's Nurchio. I mean, it is Nurchio. Don't get me wrong. Like, they're both great players. But... I would say that Mutas always have that potential, right? That's why, for a very long time, Zergs hated Mutas in this matchup specifically, you know? There's other issues with Mutas in other matchups, but... Um... Uh, actually, I have one one thought on what Snoo could have done cleaner that game. Okay, what? Uh, well, first off, we should probably do his intros because something sneaky is afoot. Uh, a little bit. And apparently, so, two things he could have done that game. One was end it sooner than he should have, because in the top right, going for a very early pool, it's going to be the blue Zerg player, <laughs> Team Liquid Snoots. In the bottom left, as the Red Zerg, he is Nurchio. So while I really like the Queens uh, for their transfuses and auto attacks and all those things, the thing I was going to comment on was go classic like he does versus Terran. Add a couple of Ravagers to that mix. Suddenly those fungal growths are about 10 times more potent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Anything to combo with the fungal growths, basically. But I mean, we have like... You know, maybe you should have gotten queens faster. Uh, people keep bringing up Nidus Worms, which he I don't I don't think Nidus Worms would have. Yeah, done I'm much really confused as to why that seems to be a common agreement the, on the chat. The problem wasn't Snoop getting across the map. Like he yeah, distracted he got... in the north and ran through the south. Yeah. Like it happened several times. It was Muta still cleaning them up at the end. So the same end result with the Nidus Worm. I feel just would have cost him more. Yeah, gas. exactly. Yeah, and um, uh, he was counterattacking. So I don't know. Uh, by the way, shouts to Haplo42. Thank you for the seven month resub, friends. Just glad you're back in the saddle, Rifkin. Zombie Grub, thanks for doing such a great job while your partner was out. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zombie Grub. Uh, so the links coming in for Snoot do get scouted. This isn't him even trying to be sneaky about it. Uh, Nurture's pool is late to the party, and Snoot's going to bail at his doorstep as well. So this could be really bad for Nurture. 
-hmm. It's interesting though because the priority on Bailings over speed is going to be an interesting dynamic. Speed doesn't give you any extra damage, but it lets you pick your fights a lot better. And that's usually what you want in this situation. But hell, if you get that one good to Bailing hit, fuck it. That's the only thing that matters. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting to see him go entirely without speed, because usually it's like the true all-in, or then like, you know, kind of gasless, or speedling with the gas, you know? Like, it's very rare that you skip the, the gas to get the banelings. But anyway, uh, since he is getting banelings, he doesn't actually have all guys on gas, he just won't be bothered with that speed. So the follow-up might be what looks like a gasless expand, but, you know, we know, uh, started off a lot weirder than that. Sudo is on top of the hatchery and is already so damn low that Nurchio probably just has to give this up. Like, he didn't pull the drones immediately, his build was unideal to go up against this, and while he has a spine crawl in the main because he was like, oh shit, this is a real, true, all-in, I gotta be prepared, it's it's kind of not. Like, the lack of speedlings mean that Snoots does get, you know, a surprising amount of drones behind this, and a thir um, sorry, a natural, which the Overlord sees, and Nurchio now knows, like, oh, oh, okay. Like, and now what, now what does he do? He doesn't have his own speed either um, to counterattack with. He doesn't even have his own Baneling nest. He really is just kind of out of luck going down a ramp against Banelings. I, I don't know. He's going to have to just spend a lot of lings. Hope his micro is super good. Yeah. Oh, queen which it almost wasn't. Fire. Oh, the surround for the lings, though. The slow lings on that oh, queen. Yo, creep spread and a spine crawler may have allowed him to eventually push out here. The drone hides to the north. I don't know if Snoot actually saw that right. sneak fire, but it's certainly not coming back to take that base anytime soon. And now Nurtri's just out of worker, unfortunately. Nurtri's in a pretty bad spot. Oh, almost gets that bane lane. Almost. It really is a case where like Snoot can't end the game. Oh, I'm surprised to use the bane lanes like that. Okay, well that. Okay, all right. So this suddenly looks better for Nurtio as Snoot Diving gives up for his... that queen is not worth it, though. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what. It... Yeah, I definitely think he thought the, the three banelings would have been enough, and you can see why it, it almost was. <laughs> but that means he lost that little low ground, I, I can always defeat you on a ramp situation. Uh, and, well, it's not like game over, it's not like, well, you, you definitely threw your lead here. It does allow Nurcio to take that natural base finally with ease, as well as maybe get something out on the map. Now, I wondered if they both would skip speed, or, you know, maybe one would get it to control the map, but they both end up getting speed a little interesting um the logic there is that you know if you think you can get away without speed you can get more drones you know and quicker to a lair quicker to a roach worm but galactic process while it's pretty easy to get three bases if you can wall off the front first they get creep spread out the front creep spread at the front uh which seems only just not getting down the roach warns for him a lair for nurgio two different paths nurgio is still behind for sure it's natural only just uh not even finishing up quite yet He's down in workers. He's trying to recover. It was a pretty rough start, but I guess recovery on the road. As Snoot getting awkward leads off this, I guess. Like the third base comes down for him. He's moving towards that Roach Warren a little bit quicker. Nurtio's playing catch up while Snoot plays getting ahead. But Nurtio's going to go for a Spire once again. And the concern for this is not only will he not really have the money to make, you know, seven mutas right off the bat type thing. He's going to be doing that into roaches, and there's not already five spine crawlers down, right? Like, when we see these roach pushes, they do still get shut down the same way they used to. You get a nice wall of spine crawlers, you buy that time, the mutas pop, they clean everything else up because they can't shoot up. But unfortunately, I think timing is on Snoot's favor here, so Nurchio might be in some trouble. I think he is. I think the almost desperate maneuver, or he even cancels this, to go for mutas is probably the right one when you're in this bad of a position. Because, like, mind you, if he had gone for his own roaches, he would not be where where Snoot is, army supply-wise. So I think that that's why the Spire would have been a better choice. But he has to get there first. He's putting all of his minerals into spine crawlers, and there is only one ramp. And it's, it's, you know, it's a bit of a choke, too, to defend. So this is his best chance right now. But will they be enough? Banelings can also be added in here, of course. Not a ton, so he didn't have that much gas. But Ravagers as well. I don't know. I don't know if he can break this. And now Mutas will be out to add on a little bit extra damage. Nurtio might even be able to cancel one or two of these spines, but he's gonna play pretty damn safe, so not gonna uh, not gonna take that. Failing's being the first ones in. They do get some nice hits, and the Ravagers get a cross about two. So the first two spines go down, but this is the time Nurtio wanted. This is the time Nurtio needed. Eight, sorry, excuse me, six Mutas on way. There's still not that many, however. The last few spine crawlers were necessary to continue buying time, as now the mutas are out, so they still need to actually clean this up physically. Yeah, uh, I mean, the roaches are pretty much are dead. The ravagers to. don't have a lot of health, so they should be able to hold that on to this. That ended up being but... pretty perfect. 
Well, the problem for Nurture, though, coming out of this is he has no queens left over. So there's going to be no injects going on. He certainly doesn't have the money after losing all those spine crawlers plus the queens to actually build more either. So he's banking on just mutas. If Snoo yeah. can find a way to hold on, build a couple of spore crawlers and queens here and there, I think Ling Floods will eventually win in the game. Because keep in mind, if Nurture is gone, his only units are those mutas. He's going to have no base defense. And that's kind of the situation we're seeing right now. The mutas are exposed a little bit. He decides to come back home. So the Lings for Snoo, if they commit, will be in trouble, but can easily escape. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing that Snoot ended up getting that Spain or Ling speed, sorry. Not Bane Ling speed, as this will be his only option for getting back into Nurchio's base. Roaches just would not cut it. Of course, on the defense, he's now getting set up. He's got extra queens on the way. He's got sport crawlers, which were maybe a little bit late, but that's where the Lings would have, you know, counterattacked and bought that time. But I do believe in the power of Mutas, all right? I said it in the beginning of this game. I think that was not just Nurchio being really, really good at this matchup. I thought it was the Mutas that made that last game last. 30 whole minutes and I can see something similar happening here mutas they get you so much more than just direct damage you know sure you kill overlords maybe you get into the drone line before the spore crawlers are done maybe you pick up a couple of queens they get you so much control over the game so that you can take a third base you know and if this is an even game you even take a faster fourth base um, and you have your own lings also do run bys in case the mutas aren't quite cutting it and snoots I mean let's go back to the very first game of this series which was now 40 minutes ago um he got torn apart by lings so you know what if these mutas break open all these rocks will that happen again for snoots we'll see now that i brought out the rocks i really want nurture to tear him down right <laughs> i'll get around to it probably uh i do think the uh, appropriate move too is gonna go mass muta you know again like an even game where all that beginning stuff didn't happen, maybe you can throw in a Roach Warren, you know, different ways to play Mutas. But in this situation, I think it is going to be all Mutas or die. Maybe Fast Hive, if Nurture thinks he can get away with it. Again, Mutas can buy you so much time. When the defending player decides to move out, they have to really know they can move out. Otherwise, they lose their army in the middle of the map to overwhelming numbers. So it usually takes a damn long time. And Snoot does have one weakness. I would say it's being a little too over-defensive, um, a little too safe sometimes, and that could give Nurchio a lot of time to uh, get somewhere. Uh, Lings? I guess he's really trying to <laughs> pull, <like> the, <laughs> pull the army away. He really wants it going all the way off to the right side. There we go. Yeah, so nice distraction on one side. A couple of drones might die here, but he should be able to pull them away fairly quickly. Even the overlords get grabbed with this. It's so just grabbing everything. Bit of a panic, but nothing too urgent. I do want to point out, though, well, Nurture has got a lot of the same moves and sort of plans that looks like he's had prior to this. Snoot's also moving on. He's not getting hung up on this. Like, Nurture's finishing his bailing nest as Snoot's moving towards Hive. Like, that's the kind of pacing of the game we have right now. Well, Nurture isn't as far behind as he could be. Invitation pit about halfway done. Catching up on those drones. Third base fully saturated already, in fact. Could even look for a fourth base. Like I said, you know, with the map control the mutas give you. But yeah, those ancestors. It's also been costing you some of his supply. Any other position overlords have been getting picked off. He has supply blocked briefly, but not because he doesn't have a macro. He just lost to overlords. So yeah. small things like that could be really annoying going forward and trying to move through the game. I mean, taking the fourth base is also something he's not really guaranteed to get. Yeah. Uh, roaming links in the north side, going to be looking at intercepts, uh, Nurchios. He does see that with the watchtower, so nicely done there. Maybe make a couple of bailings for the defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, Infestors will be a huge asset too, whether it's getting a fungal growth on Lings or whether it's getting fungal growth on the Mutas, both are an absolute necessity. Snoot going for the Ultras, Nurchio going for his own Hive. This is going to be a very interesting variation of that last game. I really want to see what this Hive is for. This might be for Ultras too, believe it or not, for, uh, for Nurchio. But oh, I don't think he was expecting the Infestors there, so they get their fungals down. They get all their fungals down Start, too. They, they hit the lings on top of the or the mutas yeah. on top of the lings, I should say. So that was like a double layered fungal growth. That was really nice for Snoot. For Nurchio, as we saw, the mutas were actually really not great when they were sitting in like 13 to 19. But when he got up to like 28, they were even killing ultralisks, something that, frankly, mutas shouldn't be able to do in most situations. Yeah. But I think we had like what TLO and Chad actually asked. Does Snoot even have carapace or uh, chitinous plating? Excuse me. Like that's how weird that looked to see. Yeah. Snoot's so banking so many minerals and gas. Like, that, this is ins that's almost an insane count, of course, because he's waiting for the Ultralisk, and now he's going to have a lot coming out all at once. 
Unfortunately, uh. spine crawler walls will not save you against ultras, so no, I don't know what the no, neutral no, no. ones are. Uh, actually, he's gonna be going for ultras as okay, well. There you go. See. So yeah, he could have gone for a greater spire, as I you know was talking about last game, especially because it's plus two, kind of finish out well with the hive. But it is going to be ultra versus ultra with more counter attack opportunities and run bias opportunities for Nurchio. Not so much for Snoot, but it's like an, a question of will that bring him back in the game uh, the overall supply wise, right? Because he's still down by forty, and he's not the one with a bank. So need account did get. Uh, Pumped up again. 22 is definitely not bad. He's gonna go for plus three fire attack again, so no thoughts about the Greater Spire. They're just really thinking that's the uh, the wrong move to do, and I'm still like, I don't think it's like, why, why, God, aren't you going for Broodlord? It's just like, why aren't you? Like, a simple curiosity. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually don't think Broodlords would be a terrible choice, but it is a much more expensive, and I think for Nurtio, again, just going back in the pack, that he's very mobile, he's very active. I don't think a slow moving Broodlords would work for him here. It really would be the same effect as Lurkers, which we have seen as a response to someone else going for a fast hive. You know, you get the Spinecrawler defense, you get the yeah. SimCity. Um, Actually, point is, you would funny. have a defense back at home. That's funny how much the matchups evolved past that point, because Lurkers were the response to Ultras for a long time, and now it is Ultras versus Ultras more often than not. Yeah. In fact, Lurkers were like the king of uh, ZVZ for a long time, and not even just limited to the beta. Mm hmm. Um. It's going to be straight up Ultra versus Ultra. Snoot not attacking while he's maxed out with a better upgraded Ultras means that I think Nurture's going to get maxed out too. Bit of a Ling run by here. And uh, Max versus Max out, that's all it's up to positioning. It's up to, you know, Mute is getting on top of the army a little bit faster. It's up to a lot of different things instead of just numbers, which uh, maybe I spoke too soon. Snoot is moving out, but then thinking twice about it, he's not bringing any anti air with him. And I think he realized that, like, oh, shoot, <laughs> where those Mutas go. As Infestors and Queens into that third base, but they're coming back now. But that's that's Nurtio buying time. Touch that fungal. Lings up to the north with a couple of ultras, the fancy one, fancy ultras. Uh, no, Snoot knows about this. Nope, Nurtio, don't do this. Okay. Snoot really is doing a decent job splitting up his army. At any point, he's a little bit slow on on. I guess trading places, you know, Queen Infestors for Mutas, Ultras for Ultras, he could easily lose a base or two. Uh, but so far he's doing a decent job and he does have that creep spread still going. He wants, he realizes eventually his queens will move out just like last game. This is what I was talking about. I guess he could also not just lose a base, he could lose you know, the Infestors and Queens to the Ultras. I miss, yeah, there we go, as you say, this was, there was something cool Petraeus did for a while where he would use Infestors as uh, sort of Infested Terran force fields against Ultras for a time. That was always like one of my favorite things to see, but oh, this base unfortunately, Ooh. yeah, that base. Like base. Is... Well, he does get the gold though to help make up for this. So if he keeps the drones alive, it won't be so <gasps> bad. The Ultra fight to the south getting a little bit scrappy, but goes in the favor of Snoot. Top side though, the queens are burning a lot oh, no. of transfusers, okay. and there's simply no fungals for those mutas. Oh yeah, the festers were. There's one. There's one coming in now. He's really yeah. late to the party though. They're Keeps late the to the alive, party, though. and I think some of them died or used the fungals right here. All of his ultras got knocked out, but Nurchio on four bases as well had a bit of a of a bank and replaced them, just as Snoot did. Poor guy. Uh, yeah. I I, I think it's weird to see Nurtio with more income than Snoot, considering Snoot's got oh, like the gold base no. coming up and stuff too. But oh, the pickoffs! These are really nice pickoffs. Transfuses are better than keeps that one investor alive. Now to the south, there's no energy left to deal with the mutas. You might be able to take on the ultras if it were just ultras versus this, because the queens are, of course, the kings of this one. However, yes, the mutas continue to roam around. There's not a lot Snoot can do about them. Not without those fungals. Snoot is not in a dangerous position yet. He still has four bases, he still has a bank, he still has max out army. But you can clearly see that he might lose control of this game quickly. He is on the losing side every single fight. Losing infestors, losing energy, uh, which is just like losing units with queens because they really do need transfuses. And losing bases. This one's gonna go down too. Ultras actually get so surrounded. Three against seven or nine. Geez, how many are there? How many is that? It's 13 Ultras against 13. Oh, not anymore. Oh, God. <laughs> Queens, where are your transfuses? They're busy fighting the Mutas to the south. The fungal growth was pretty big as he caught most of the Mutas, but he wasn't able to follow up as it was off of creep. Snoot, in the meantime, does push back that north side. Oh, it's so dumb looking at Ultra versus Ultra, but God, I love it. This is why I would imagine if war elephants were a thing and we lived oh, back in the time of, like, Carthage and stuff. Yeah. I love using those in, like, Dynasty Warriors. 
Anyway. I was thinking more like Age of Vampires, but either way. Yeah, Age of Anthology also had them, but I remember in, in Dynasty Warriors it looked especially dumb because it was like first person. Anywho, uh, the mutas did not really die to those fungals that I missed. As you said, there was no follow up. So there's still quite a few of them, 16, a couple died of the, the sport followers now, but Ling's on top of the drones, and Suit already lost like 20 plus to the Ultra attack up here, so he's down to 27. I mean, he's yeah. had a very consistent income up until this point, right. and if he doesn't realize that it's no longer <gasps> consistent, this would be bad news. But so, so here's the one consolidating point I'll make for Snoot. His army that he has right now is good enough to take on the army that Nurture will have for some time. The amount of queens he has will out transfuse and out heal the ultras. Unless, oh, well, he gets caught that's... like this. He's got to run. His youth in the wrong place. The ultras are in the south. The infestors are in the north. They need to be in opposite locations. Yeah. That's all in the defense, though. These oh, the queens infestors are on the front lines. These queens are never going to get over to their side of the map, and Nurture is going to out expand them. The okay, that's clever. The ultras. That's very clever, but he loses a base here. Oh, but losing all the mutas, too. Losing all the mutas, seriously, to the queens as well. Oh, oh, Nurture. Oh, he might have made a mistake losing too much army. He wasn't oh, the on that big of a bank. <laughs> the investors always in the front line. They got no energy, but they're ready to fight. Yeah. <laughs> Ultra's Ultra up here does go a little bit better for Nurcio. Now, Stu, remember, he's had, um, we haven't really highlighted this, but he's had better upgrades to his Ultras for a long time. Initially, it was only one upgrade. Now, it's two upgrades. And Nurcio, he's out of a bank. Did he just mess up? He may have. I, I just want to point out, every time someone points out that, that theory of like, what if we had a game where it was played on slow speed, for how how would each race be affected, right? I feel like Ultra versus Ultra is a representation of like what Ling versus Ling would be if the game was played on Ultra slow or something, That's as far as micro slow. capabilities go. Top side though, this is not going to go so well for Snoot. His Ultras are all across the map. Queen's obviously not dealing much damage through this thick kindness plating. But you know... His Ultras are all so close to death. Yeah, Nurcio. This Ultra that's stuck behind the Queen. I think he over-dedicated to the attack, he doesn't have a bank, GG! Oh my god, Stu's defense ends up being good enough. Stu! Holy crap, he advances, he's going to Mexico. Congratulations, he'll finish first place in the European Passport Qualifier. Giving us a goddamn good series. Really fun stuff out of these two. But now Nurcio falls to fight against Euthermal. And while earlier I had made comments saying it'd be very exciting to see Snoop versus Euthermal, Nurgio has actually played a couple of extended best of series versus Euthermal, and unfortunately, seems to always have Euthermal's number. So on one hand, big underdog story for Euthermal coming into this, I think in terms of this particular matchup. I don't think it's an underdog in terms of like player strength and skill, but just this one, like specifically him versus specifically Nurgio, this is going to make for a very desperately enticing best of three grand finals. <laughs> yeah, best of three, unfortunately, but oh my goodness. All right, that's going to send us into a break. A bit of an extended one is they do have to do vetoes. We'll get back to you as soon as possible.